Brussels, a city still on edge, fearful that the terror visited upon Paris just over a week ago could be its fate as well. Today, at a press conference, the Belgian Prime Minister Charles Michel said the threat remains real. The potential targets are the same as yesterday, he's saying. I remind you, these are highly frequented places, such as shopping areas and public transport. The metro will stay closed until at least Wednesday. The same goes for schools and universities. For people living in the Belgian capital, also the institutional heart of the European Union and the NATO military alliance, it is a shock. Just the insecurity. But we don't know how to say, feeling not good. Belgian security forces arrested one person allegedly connected to the Paris attacks in overnight raids, but they have yet to track down the main suspect still at large, Brussels-born Salah Abdeslam, who is thought to have driven one of the cars involved in the Paris bloodshed. In Paris today, police found an abandoned suicide belt in a southern suburb. Sources saying the explosives on it matched those on the belts worn by the original attackers. There's now speculation the belt might have been after slums, that he got cold feet before detonating it. Earlier in the day, the British Prime Minister David Cameron visited the French President François Hollande, laying flowers outside the Bataclan Theatre where 89 people were killed. We face a shared threat and we must share information and intelligence to better protect ourselves from these brutal terrorists. The UK and France are already doing this, but today we've agreed to step up our efforts even further and to work more closely with our European neighbours. Today, France intensified its bombing campaign against ISIS targets in Syria and Iraq. The aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle launching its first sorties since reaching the region. David Cameron says he hopes to extend British airstrikes against ISIS targets from Iraq to Syria after a vote in the British Parliament, and he'll make his case later this week. But critics say airstrikes against targets in Syria are essentially ineffective without a real fighting force on the ground. Margaret Evans, CBC News, London.